It begins, you're a delivery person. You're going into a building you don't really know much about. You're looking for someone to sign for a package and there's no one around. So you head into a nearby room. In there, you see two security guards on the floor. They're not breathing. You hear the door lock behind you and you see a screen in front of you informing you that there's a fire in the building. You have no idea how to get out of here or what's going on. So you log into the building's communication network, desperate for help. But unfortunately, the tables turn. There are four people stuck in the depths of the building, surrounded by fire and you're the only one who can help them escape. What follows is a tale of desperation, mysteries, pain, choices, and of course, death. This game is simple and complex at the same time. It lasts less than an hour, but it has stuck with me for over a decade now. This is a game that I don't think should be lost to the constant forward flow of time. This is No One Has To Die. Welcome to video, by the way. No One Has to Die was released in 2013, available for free in browser and on several different game sites, most notably Newgrounds. It was created by Sammy Blue, with art by Cindy Zhu and music from F777, yes, the guy from the Geometry Dash soundtrack. I was a big fan of browser games at the time and found it basically the day it was released. The title sounded intriguing to me, so I thought I would give it a try. And, as I said earlier, it has stuck with me ever since. I love how the story develops in this game. I love how the mystery is deep and complex, yet it's jam-packed for you to put together in just 45 minutes. And of course, I love the world that this game presents, and how invested I'm able to get into it. I'm so invested, in fact, that I'm gonna shut up for a while. I don't really think it's worth giving a straight play-by-play -play on the story of this game. I think it's worth more so showing people how the game feels to me, how it feels in my mind. Sure, on the surface it's just a visual novel presented in a text message style format, but it feels like a lot more than that to me. Without further ado, let's get into it. Urgent. The Phoenix Corporation headquarters security has been compromised. All personnel evacuate immediately. Tempest engaged. Security room locked. Emergency services contacted. ETA. 3 hours, 17 minutes. Visitor has logged on. Hello? Is anyone there? What the hell is going on here? Christina has logged on. There's a fire! Everyone evacuate the building! Steve has logged on. Oh, it's you, Chris. This is pretty bad. I can smell the smoke from here. Steve? Why are you still here? I thought you'd gone home. I was working back late. Why do you care? Troy has logged on. Lionel has logged on. This is the CEO of Phoenix Corporation telling everybody in the facility to evacuate the building. Security staff, report in immediately. The security staff are dead. I found them lying dead in the control room. Then I saw a warning on the screen about a fire, so I logged in. What happened to them? I killed them, and then I lit the fire. Who the hell are you? Is this a joke? There's no time for this now. Visitor, if you're in the control room, then you'll have to coordinate us in escaping. You'll need one of the security codes. Security codes? The code is RFTS. What? Is this some kind of game to you? Security code confirmed. Security system online. Beginning scan. Floor B3. It works. Now, you may have a very difficult choice coming up, I'm afraid. Calculations complete. Fire on floor B3. One casualty unavoidable. Candidates. Troy. Steve. What does that mean? Our visitor is going to have to choose between keeping me or Steve alive. I trust this won't be a hard decision. No, that asshole! I'm not dying for him! My job here is done. I'm ready to die. Fire is growing. Visitor, you'll be led through how the system works. Hurry up! Urgent. Please enter your system orders. Here we get our first puzzle segment, and these are quite simple. We need to contain the spread of the fire, sacrificing as few people as possible. One casualty is unavoidable here, since we can only lock one of these two doors. The fire is sure to reach one of Troy or Steve, so really it's a question of who it's more worth to save. The guy who was admitted to starting the fire, and the guy who has done nothing wrong. It's the baby or the bathwater here, and the choice is easy. The fire has been contained. Casualties. Troy. Phew, that was tense for a bit. Glad that's over. How can you talk like that when someone just died? He had this coming. He tried to kill us. Really? I'm pretty sure he just saved you. Not his best decision. Oh. <laughs> so you two know each other? Yep. Uh, me and Steve had the misfortune of working together for the last few years. Tell me about it, Chris. Don't you wish you'd gotten to work in Troy's department instead? Shouldn't you two be looking for a way out? We're not all old like you. We can walk and type, thank you very much. 
The main hallway is completely destroyed by fire. I can't get through. I'm having the same problem. I found a staircase up to the next floor, though. Oh, same here. There's one here, too. Shall we head up? Sure. Why not? Okay, I'm heading up now. Beginning scan, floor B2. Our visitor's being very quiet. What's your story? Me? I don't work here. I was just making a delivery. A delivery? Let me guess. Tires? Pop-up books? No, stationary. Those were some strange guesses, though. What exactly do you do here? You know, that's a great question. What do we do here, Lionel? I know you got that message, Lionel. Forget it. I wasn't expecting an answer anyway. To be honest, no one really knows what Phoenix Corporation actually does. The company buys random items, toilet seats, guitars, you name it, in bulk, and then sells it all off with next to no profit. We're all almost certain it's a front. But it pays well, so we stay here. Well, Christina works here because nowhere else wants her, but that's different. <sighs> How about you shut up while I ask Lionel a serious question? I want to know about the cockatiels. Cockatiels? Oh, the cockatiel story. For nearly a year, we'd be constantly getting in shipments of live cockatiels by the thousands. God knows how many birds they bought. But the cockatiels were never seen again. No one knows what was done with them. It's an animal rights issue. Whoa, that is weird. What was going on, Lionel? We were buying cockatiels looking for a phoenix. I don't get it. You don't have to get it. That didn't even answer the question. Has anyone found anything interesting on the second floor? Nope. Nothing much here. Most of this building is reserved for storage. Shouldn't you guys all know your way around this building? Our access to the room here is very limited. That would be on your request, wouldn't it, Lionel? Truth be told, I rarely visit myself. I know what facilities this building contains, but I know very little about its layout. That's right. It's been in the notices for weeks that you were coming today. Was today something special? I was just dealing with some financial business. Nothing that could have encouraged arson. Calculations complete. Fire on floor B2. One casualty unavoidable. Candidates. Lionel, Steve. God damn it! Not again! Either Lionel or Steve is gonna die. Of the CEO of this corporation, I must request that you save me. Don't you dare! Please, save Steve. I don't know why this fire was started, but you can be Sir Lionel's responsible in some way. But Steve's done nothing wrong! Great to hear you sticking up for me for once, Chris, but our visitors already saved me once. It's their choice what they do this time around. Visitor, my life is in your hands. Make the right decision. Save me. You will be well compensated. This isn't about money, you asshole! Shut up, both of you. It's getting hot in here. This is up to our visitor. Urgent. Please enter your system orders. So, yet again, we have to choose, and Steve can't catch a break. It's either him or Lionel, but there's something about Lionel here. There's clearly some kind of mystery around what this company does, and he's the only one who's bound to have the answers. Let's try keeping him alive for now. The fire has been contained. Casualties, Steve. Made the right decision. I'll make sure you won't regret it. I'm sorry, Christina. I could only save one of them. Christina? Okay, that's alright. I don't expect you to talk to me after what I've done. How are we going to get out of here with one of us not playing along? I'm sure she's still trying to get out of here. She just has a lot to deal with at the moment. Either way, I found the stairs. Beginning scan, floor B1. Christina, just so you know, I understand this must be awful for you. I really am sorry. Don't beat yourself up about it. You did the right thing. Calculations complete. Fire on floor B1. Two casualties unavoidable. Candidates. Christina, Lionel. Two casualties unavoidable? No, that means we're both going to die. It's over. We've reached our ends. No, you can't both die. There's no other option. I'm afraid this is it. Good. I'd rather die than live in a world of people like you two. Christina, Lionel, I'm sorry. I let you guys down. It's all right. There's nothing you could have done. They could have saved Steve instead of you. Now's not the time to squabble. Goodbye, both of you. Just because you're about to die doesn't mean you're a saint. I hope you both burn in hell. Christina, don't do this. Don't waste your final moments like this. Give me one reason why I shouldn't. Urgent. Please enter your system orders. So, obviously that was not a great choice. There was no way for anyone to survive that last floor, and the story just ends there. It feels a bit premature, honestly. We don't get any answers to the questions we would have had, but we did learn a few things, and we can make some conclusions through them. Yep, that's right. 
I've got red string. Hi, welcome to camera two. I may not be in focus, but this is. Let's start off with the fire, which we know was caused by Troy. We don't know why he did it, or why he admitted it, but he seemed to accept death, as if his only plan was to set things off. Maybe there was just no reason for him to keep going. But he did give us the fire door code, so what's up with that? This could imply quite a lot of things, but we don't really know that much about him yet, because he died, so let's just move on. Next up is Phoenix Corp. We don't actually know anything about this place at all. The game is set there, the characters work there, but they don't even know what the company does. Buying and selling random things, there's no clear incentive or real profit to be made there. So this whole company is a mystery to everyone, with one exception. Lionel has to know what this company does. It's his after all but he's not singing like a canary, so we can't really explore this further. Speaking of canaries, cockatiels. The company was getting shipments of them for ages, but what were they doing with them, and why? Once again, only Lionel knows what this is for, and this piece of string was terrible by the way. The only real information he gives us here is the line, we were buying cockatiels looking for a phoenix, which is like one of the coolest lines ever by the way, holy shit. Still though, we only know that they were there. The board is looking a bit bare at the moment, but we can fix that. Let's go back and see what happens when we save Steve instead of Lionel. The fire has been contained. Casualties, Lionel. Good. Now who's being insensitive? That was the head of our company, Chris. And you chose me over him, visitor? Don't ask me to explain my choices. It makes me sick, thinking about what I just had to do. How do you think I feel? I didn't get a choice. What if I wanted to die? Save Lionel. As if you would ever sacrifice yourself for anyone. And you would? No. But at least I'm upfront about it. Oh, I found a set of stairs. I'm gonna head on up. I'm already on the next floor. I just didn't bother saying anything about it. That's a great story. Beginning scan, floor B1. You think we get paid overtime for this crap? I don't know. Barely matters, though. Time and a half of what we make is still next to nothing. Maybe Troy set the fire because he was angry about all the wage cuts recently. God, do you have any clue? Wait until we get out of here before you start making jokes about the deceased. Hey, I could be right for all you know. Guy was whack. Wouldn't take much to set him off. No, just stop. I mean it. You know, speaking of the deceased, I've been so wrapped up in working with you guys, I almost forgot I'm in a room with two dead bodies. Well, I'd forgotten too. That's awful. What can you find out about them? I guess I should probably search them, huh? I really don't want to, though. Ugh, good luck. You must have a stronger stomach than me. Okay, I'll go look now. Back. Found a blue file in the hand of one of them. Really? What does it say? It's the security code. The one that Troy gave us. Wait, really? Why are you surprised, Chris? It would explain how Troy could tell us the code. Why would he give us the code anyway? What does he get out of it? I don't get it either. Why shoot two people, set a building on fire, then try to play the hero? It makes no sense to me. Why don't we ask him? Oh, whoops. No, it's not funny. Hey, simple mistake. Chris? Chris? You sure managed to get yourself ignored a lot. Yeah, I wasn't that fussed on talking to her anyway. You too. Calculations complete. Fire on floor B1, one casualty unavoidable. No. Candidates. Christina, Steve. No. No! Chris. I thought I was going to make it. There's only one more floor to the ground level. You're getting out of here, Chris. There's no way I'm letting you die. Don't you dare. Don't you even think about it. You're not sacrificing yourself for me. Chris, you know I don't mean any of the shit I say, right? Of course I do! I'm not an idiot! You don't need to die to prove that! Good. Then I'm ready. Steve! No! You don't deserve to die! No one deserves to die, Chris. Especially not you. You're not going to ignore me now, are you? I just don't know what to say. How about goodbye? Whatever happens, this is the last time we'll ever talk to each other. This isn't how I wanted things to go! You think I want to die? You don't understand! I'm sorry, you too. If I don't do something now, you'll both die. Alright, I'm ready now. It'll be like a barbecue. Shut up! You're not going to die! Is he, Visitor? Our Visitor knows what they're doing. They'll save you. Visitor, promise me you'll save him! Promise me! Urgent. Please enter your system orders. We have a difficult choice to make. They both want the other to live, so no matter who we have left, they're probably gonna have guilt over what happened. Looking at the floor layout, it just makes more sense to save Steve. We can keep him contained, so let's just do that. 
The fire has been contained. Casualties. Christy R. I'm so sorry. I don't want to hear it. If you were sorry, you would have listened to me. I had to make a decision. I don't expect you to be happy with what I've done. Just shut up. This is not a trick. This is a nightmare. You're still there, aren't you, Chris? You're there? Send me a message. You're just ignoring me again, right? Steve, I understand this must be impossible for you right now, but you have to keep moving. <laughs> what the hell is the point of that? Christina just died for you. If you don't get out of here, she'll have died for nothing. Sure. I'm gonna get out of here. It's gonna turn out this has all been some sick joke and Chris was waiting for me outside, alive. I mean, how do I even know it was Chris who was writing those messages, right? Okay, I'm ready. I'm heading up to ground level now. I can't wait to see her again. All right, just a little further. Oh, uh, there's a desk here with one of those blue files you were talking about on top of it. It's another security code. Another one? But what for? I guess with this, you can control more fire doors at a time? Not a lot of use now. Steve? Are you still there? Steve? I knew it! I told you! Told me what? She's alive! Chris is alive! What? What's going on? So, there was a file next to the one with security code. When I saw it, I knew I had to read it. It was titled, The Phoenix Experiment. The one with the cockatiels? Just let me explain. So, I didn't get a lot of it, but here's what I understood. So, Phoenix Corp had an experiment planned where they were going to buy lots of cockatiels and teach them to say a phrase. But every time they had enough birds for the experiment, they would just randomly decide to increase their sample size. All in all, they bought around 6 million cockatiels. They stopped buying them the day something weird happened. One of the cockatiels they bought already knew the phrase they were going to teach it. Weird. Maybe whoever sold it to them knew what was going on and tried to mess with the experiment? Let me finish. So, they tagged this special cockatiel that already knew the phrase, and it taught the phrase to all the other cockatiels. But the experiment didn't end there. They ran each and every one of the cockatiels through some kind of machine. It was worse than Chris had thought. They all died. All of them. Except one. The bird that they'd marked, the one that already knew the phrase, was fine. What? What sort of machine works like that? I have no idea. The paper talks very little about the machine itself, and what it does say, I don't understand. Bizarre. But how does this tell you Christina is alive? I'm sorry, I I'm all over the place right now. So here's the thing. The phrase that the birds were taught, it was, Christina lives. Steve? Are you sure you're feeling all right? I mean it! That's what it says! You can see for yourself when I show Chris. But even if it's true, we still have no idea what that phrase means. What do you mean? Christina lives! It means she's alive. But we don't understand anything about the experiment. It could mean anything. Steve? Come on, you need to keep in contact. Sorry, no time to type. I've got to find the way out so I can find Chris. See you soon. No! Keep talking! Steve! Come on! Steve has disconnected. Reason. Signal lost. Steve! What the hell have you done? I'm coming to find you! Visitor has disconnected. So, I don't think Steve is okay, but he gave us some interesting things to ponder, so let's take a look at them. For starters, we have a slightly better idea of what the cockatiels were for. We still don't know what the experiment was or why they were taught the phrase. Christina lives. Is this just a coincidence? Why is an experiment that happened in the past relating to the present day? What was the point of teaching this phrase to the cockatiels? And why did one of them already know it? Most importantly, what kind of machine did those cockatiels go into? Most of them perished while that one special cockatiel managed to live. Obviously we will get a better idea as the game goes on, but for right now, it boggles the mind. There is one thing that is certain though, and that's that Steve really wants Christina to be alive. So let's grant his wish. I love this grid section by the way. It feels very noble, having to put Steve in the path of fire to give Christina a fighting chance of getting out of here. This is what I mean by this game having a strong effect. These are just squares on a grid, but through the context of these characters and the story around them, you can see emotion in this scene. Well, at least, I can. The fire has been contained. Casualties. Steve. No. I'm so sorry. No, it's not fair! Why would you save me? I had to listen to one of you. You don't understand. He never hurt anyone. Neither did you. Yes, I did. Troy and Lionel and Steve, they all died because of me. The security cards, too. Visitor, this is all my fault. I lit the fire. No, you didn't. Troy did. No, he didn't. I don't know what his deal is. Was. I set the fire. Then I killed the guards before they could do anything about it. From the start, it was all me. Christina. 
You know it wasn't really you. It was Troy. If it was Troy, why is he trying to save us all? I don't know. No one does. This isn't how it was meant to go. Steve wasn't meant to be here. The building was meant to be nearly empty. Let's say you did it. What was your motive? I wanted to stop whatever was going on in this building forever. And I wanted to kill Lionel before he ruined anyone else's life too. What did Lionel do? Him and his company. They killed my mother. What? My mother used to work at this company. She had the same name as me. She never told me much about what they did here. She always just said experiments. Well, one day she went to work and never came back. We ordered a search, but no one could find her. It was a week before we got the call from the Phoenix Corporation. They told us that they were so sorry and that mom had died in an experiment. Sorry, my ass. They still wouldn't tell us what happened. And then they sent back her body. They sent back her body with her brain cut out. They cut out her brain so they could experiment on it. They killed my mother so that they could look at her brain. Christina. I'm so sorry. I couldn't let them get away with doing anything like that ever again. So I started working here at the company. I knew who I was, but I think they gave me the job to shut me up. Since then, I've spent God knows how long trying to find out what they did to my mother, but I haven't gotten anywhere. When I read into the notices that Lionel was going to be visiting today, I knew I had to do something. But I thought I had worked out the timing perfectly. Steve wasn't meant to be working overtime. He's dead. I killed him. I killed all of them. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Nothing's going to help. I'll just keep moving through this building. When I get out, I'll be arrested and I'll finally get what I deserve. Okay. All right. I'm on the ground floor now. To be honest, I still have no idea where I am. Most of the building is off limits normally. We take elevators down to our workspaces on floor B3. We never see the rest of the building. What a weird way to do things. It makes sense when you remember they're trying to hide the skeletons in the closet. Oh, there's a blue file on the desk in here. It looks like the one you found on the security guard. Another one? What's the point of that? It has a different code on it. Maybe this would let you lock more fire doors at a time? But if I had that earlier... I don't even want to think about this. I'm going to keep moving. Hold on a sec. There's a big metal door I need to open. Alright. Okay, I'm through now. There's a sign here. It says Tempest Entrance. What's that? No clue. There's a door here, though. It looks kind of strange. I'm going to go through. Sure. Just tell me what you find. Christiana has disconnected. Reason. Signal lost. What? No! We were so close! Why would it drop out now? Christina? Christina, I'm, I'm coming to find you. Visitor has disconnected. <laughs> I love that last bit so much. There is so much to talk about with this one, so let's just go in order. For one, Christina claims to have started the fire, and there's reason to believe her. At the beginning of the game, she showed concern for Steve being there, and at the end, she was saying that she felt bad that he got involved in all of this. She was the only one who felt bad for Troy, which would make sense if she was the only one to know that he was innocent. But most importantly, why would she lie at this point? What reason would she have for making up a lie about herself being responsible after all is said and done? Why is Troy lying? He's still connected to the fire because of the lie, but we don't really know what the purpose of it is. Then there's Christina's mother. She worked at Phoenix Corp and died as part of an experiment, or so they claim. For one, there's the obvious link between these two, they're related of course, but also Christina's mother's death is basically what started the path towards this fire happening at all. But more important than that, her mother had the same name as her. So consider this, we know her name was Christina, we know she worked at the company, and we know that at some point after she died, cockatiels were taught to say the phrase, Christina lives. It could very well be her. She might be alive. Lastly, the room Christina walked into at the end, the Tempest. And yes, I know, this is a lot of string already. Her signal seemed to drop right as she walked in here. But why? She seemed to be fine talking to us throughout the rest of the building, so what is it about this room that made her suddenly vanish? And we know there's definitely something about this room, because right at the start of the game, the computer tells us that the Tempest is engaged. What the hell does that mean? Well, there's one way we can find out. There's someone that we don't really know anything about yet. Someone who we really need answers on. Someone who we need to save. Someone named... Troy. The fire has been contained. Casualties. 
Steve. Why? Why save me? My thoughts exactly! Why did you leave Steve to die? I could only save one of them, and Troy knew the security code. He's the reason I could save anyone. We need to know what else he knows. Now we're thinking. I'm not going to do anything to save anyone from here on in. Tell me now, how did you know the security code? Visitor, check the bodies of those two security guards. This better not be a trick. Just do it. Fine. Well, that explains that. What did you find? One of the guards was holding a blue file with the security code Troy told us before written in it. They were? Blue file? Those contain the security codes. Each one allows you to lock another fire door. I found the code when I killed them. I thought I'd give you a fighting chance, so I told you the code. You're welcome. Why did you do this? Instead of asking all these questions, why don't you look for a way out? The main room's completely blocked by rubble is why. There should be a staircase in a room near both of you. Hmm, you're right. I'm heading up now. Fine, me too. So, while we're here, Lionel, could you tell me what the hell it is that you set this company up to do? Don't waste your breath. He's not going to tell you anything. Well, maybe you'd like to explain then. There's nothing to explain. That's a lie and you know it! You both work here. Shouldn't you know what the company does? You'd think. The company mostly buys and sells things in bulk. But there's something dark going on underneath all of that. Like what? Beginning scan, floor B2. Candidates. Christina, Troy. Huh? Don't worry just yet. Then why would you say anything? Christina. That's a nice name. It's your mother's, correct? What? How could you know that? Answer me! Tell me right now! God damn it! Calculations complete. Fire on floor B2. One casualty unavoidable. Candidates. Christina, Troy. How could you know that? How could you know the code? How could you know that one of us is going to die? I told you. I lit the fire. I'm behind all of this. I know everything. No! That answer's not good enough! Can we do this later? There is no later! Tell me now! I'm not telling anyone anything. Just let me die. Urgent. Please enter your system orders. We have to make a choice again, and it's between Christina and Troy. The one who lit the fire, and the one who is still claiming to have lit the fire. Not only that, but Troy knows way more than he should. If he didn't do any of this, why did he know the code? Why did he know who would be in danger here? And why did he know Christine's mother's name? Remember earlier when I said that it was the baby or the bathwater? Well, Steve is the bathwater in this situation. There's something about Troy, there's a mystery to him that we need to figure out. It's incredibly interesting. But with all that said, he's begging to be let go. Maybe we should grant his wish. The fire has been contained. Casualties. Troy. Well, I guess he finally got what he wanted. What? The man was a maniac. He's cost my company millions already. And he killed four people. It'll be six if you don't get out of here soon. Alright, alright. I found the stairs. Me too. Beginning scan. Floor B1. I didn't mean to be so callous before. It's just, this will severely impact our operations. Don't you think that might have been the point? What do you mean by that? Troy probably wanted to stop Phoenix from doing whatever messed up things you do here. I suppose that makes sense. No, impossible. Our business here is strictly confidential. Does that sound like a slip of the tongue to you, visitor? Calculations complete. Fire on floor B1, two casualties unavoidable. Candidates, Christina, Lionel. Two casualties unavoidable. No. So, neither of us is going to live? Afraid not. I guess that's fairest, isn't it? What? Well, why would we deserve to live when Steve and Troy had to die? Because Troy was a murderer. And what about Steve? Well, either way, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Urgent. Please enter your system orders. Once again, Christina and Lionel are destined to die together on this floor. We only got one small bit of information here, but Troy seems to know something about Christina's mother, but it's not even really clear how, and I think it's high time we start to find out. The fire has been contained. Casualties. Christina. Not again. You don't sound too happy for someone who's lucky to be alive. Visitor, fail me. What would it take to get you to kill me? You can't ask someone something like that. 
you're mad. I've killed a, all these people. Of course I'm goddamn mad. Beginning scan, floor B1. You're gonna have to choose between saving me or Lionel soon. Promise me you'll save Lionel. But how do you know that? It doesn't matter. All that matters is I'm a monster and I don't deserve to live. It does matter. Of course it matters. I want to know too. Tell me why you did this. There's not enough time. Besides, you won't believe me. You never believe me until it's too late. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Calculations complete. Fire on floor B1. One casualty unavoidable. Candidates. Lionel. Troy. It doesn't matter. Just save Lionel. Must concur. Please, spare me. Shut up! I want to know what's going on! If I give you answers, will you let me die? If you save me, I'll tell you things Troy doesn't know. I'll tell you what we really do here. Troy, tell me. Then you can die. Okay, but I'll have to be quick. The truth is, I've been here before. What is that supposed to mean? Urgent. Please enter your system orders. It's down to just Troy and Lionel, both bartering for Lionel's life and promising information of some kind. But then Troy draws us in with the most interesting open thread here. I think we need to find out what he has to say. The fire has been contained. Casualties. Lionel. So, this is how it goes, is it? I don't know how much longer I can do this. What are you talking about? What were you saying before the chat cut out? And while we're at it, how do you know everything? And why did you light the fire? There's nothing I can do now. I might as well tell you what I know. First things first, the reason I lit the fire, I did it. What? That makes no sense. I don't know who really did it, though. I don't know who killed the security guards, either. While we're at it, I have no idea what they do here at this company. You're full of crap. How did you know all that stuff, then? How did you know the security code? You're probably not going to believe this. No. I know you're not going to believe this. I knew the security code because I heard you read it out. You know that makes no sense. You told me it before I ever read it. This time, I did. This time? What the hell do you mean, this time? I've been here before. I've been here five times before. The first time, I was in my office doing my work when suddenly the fire alarms went off. I went on to chat to find out what was happening. And Lionel explained you would need a security code to save anyone. We all scrambled around looking for a blue file before you finally found one. That's when I found out the code. Then, you had to make decisions. Steve died, Christina died, Lionel died. I was the only one left. I had to keep going. I found a room called the Tempest Entrance. I went inside, and there was a bright light, and suddenly... Well, you won't believe this bit. Suddenly, I was back before the fire, sitting in my office. What? I don't know how, but I traveled through time. I was so glad to hear you all alive, but none of you remembered what had happened. You all thought I was insane. But, just like this time, because I knew the code, you thought I could save everyone. So, once again, Steve died, then Christina, then Lionel. I got to the end, back to the Tempest entrance, and it happened again, and again. And again, five times it's happened. That's a lot to take in. I'm not sure I believe you. If that's true, why did you say you were the arsonist? Because I just want to die. Five times now, I've watched them all die just so I can live. And for what? So I can go back and watch them die again. I wanted you to think I was evil. Who would save a murderer over an innocent life? Me, apparently. None of my plans to save you others have worked. Not one. I'm just tired. So, now what? I've checked everywhere. All the doors are locked, just like last time. I have no choice. I have to go back to the start. Wait, you don't have to. The fire's contained now. If you just wait there, someone will come and find you. No, I can't let the loop end. I can't let the loop end until someone else survives. I've been through too much. I'm ready to die. Whoever makes it out of this building should want to live. But if you go back, what happens to me? What happens to this world once you go? I have no idea. Does that mean there are now five worlds out there, in space or time or wherever, where you've just disappeared and everyone else is dead? When you put it like that, I guess you're right. 
But how is that possible? My guess is as good as yours. I'm outside the Tempest entrance now. This is it. I guess so. I'll see you again soon. Just, you won't see me. I still can't wrap my head around this at all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Troy has disconnected. Reason. Signal lost. Visitor has disconnected. This is honestly one of the most engaging character endings I've seen in a game like this. Everything about Troy just suddenly clicks into place. His callousness, his knowledge, his desire to be left behind. He's been stuck in a sort of time loop, being reset by the Tempest. We still don't know what it does, but it seems like every time Troy reaches it, he gets reset back to the start of the fire. The door code, his knowledge about what it takes for him to survive this, hell, even Christina's mother's name, these must have been things that got brought up in the past loops, things that he now has basically committed to heart. As a character, he's just incredibly interesting to me. Everything about him builds up to this amazing moment, and then you just have to let him be. Let him go back into the Tempest and hope that next time, something different will happen. But now, there are still a few more mysteries left for us to uncover. A few loose threads remain, and there's only one person who can tie them up. The fire has been contained. Casualties. Troy. Excellent. You have made the right decision. I'm not so sure there was a right decision. Now, you made a promise. Very well. The deal's a deal. What do you want to know? I want to know what Christina was talking about. What's going on in this company? Christina herself has no idea what we do here. She was right about one thing, though. Here at Phoenix Corporation, we buy and sell large stocks of cheap products just to keep the books looking busy. It's a front. Our true interest here is time travel. Time travel? It is indeed what I said. And you expect me to believe that? I don't care what you believe. You asked for the truth, and here it is. Now, if you'll let me continue, we, in fact, have a fully functional time machine in this facility. But the time machine we have constructed doesn't quite work like the ones you might see in the movies. As in, it does nothing because time travel isn't real? If you're not going to listen, I don't see why you bothered saving me. No, our time travel doesn't affect physical objects. Well, that doesn't sound very useful. What can it do? It can carry a person's consciousness through time. Consciousness? Their thoughts, their personality, their likes and dislikes, their experiences, and their memories. Our machine can carry those things through time. You know, I don't believe a word of this. It's your own loss. So if I was to hop in this machine and go an hour into the future, what would actually happen? Consciousness would leave your body, and effectively you would die. Die? At first. Then, after an hour, your consciousness would re-enter your body and you would come back to life, not even realizing an hour had passed. That's impossible. We've done it successfully. People, birds, dogs, anything with a brain can travel in our machine. But what use is that sort of time travel? Your body would start to decompose if you went for more than a few hours. It is true. We're still experimenting with methods of preserving the body that would allow the consciousness to later re-enter it. Currently, freezing seems promising. But this is not where our true interest lies. If a person travels forward through time, they can visit distant eras and the like. They can still only live for the 80 years their body dictates. What if one was to travel backwards? You mean, back to when they were younger? Exactly. They would retain their memories and experiences gained over time, but they would have a younger body. Unless they were in an accident and died instantly, they could live forever. Whoa. Whoa. Yes. With our machine, no one has to die. That would be huge, but does it work? We believe so. What's that supposed to mean? Our tests traveling forward have gone exactly to plan. However, in our tests, things didn't work quite so well going backwards. What happened? Our human test subject entered the machine, we activated it, her consciousness left her body, and... and unfortunately, it never came back. She died. That's terrible. What went wrong? We have dedicated every resource we have available to discovering the cause of this problem. And you haven't worked it out? We think the machine may have worked. What? How can you say that when someone died? It is an incredibly complicated concept, but I will explain it to you. First, though, you have to do something for me. I have entered the code to unlock access to the rooms on the ground floor. I'm in the Tempest Room. Come meet me here. But why? Why can't you tell me now? Lionel has disconnected. Reason. Signal lost. Lionel? Where'd you go? I guess I have no choice now. I have to go find you. Visitor has disconnected. Where do I even begin? Let's try just going in order. Phoenix Corp is working on time travel, and they've even got a time machine. Sending them forward, it's fine. 
sending someone backward, someone died trying that. Let's go thread by thread. Phoenix Corp's connection to time is pretty clear, and we happen to know someone who is travelling through time. Lionel told us to meet him in the Tempest, and based on what we've seen, that's probably where the time machine is. I mean, Christina vanished after going in there, and Troy kept going in there and getting sent back in time. But how does it even work? Why did Christina's mother seem to die going into it? And what the hell is up with the cockatiels? These are things we still haven't learnt, but after completing all of those routes we've already gone through, a final timeline opens up. And if we're lucky, it might just give us the answers we desire. Urgent. The Phoenix Corporation headquarters security has been compromised. All personnel evacuate immediately. Tempest engaged. Security room locked. Emergency services conducted. ETA. 3 hours, 17 minutes. Visitor has logged on. Lionel? What the hell is going on here? I went into the Tempest room like you told me to, and now I'm back here, in the control room. Wait. Christina has logged on. What? How did I end up here? Steve has logged on. Chris, you're alive! I knew you were alive! Steve! I thought you were dead! Me? Troy has logged on. You guys, you remember. You finally remember. Troy, this all just part of some trick of yours, isn't it? No. I have no idea what's going on. You think I'm gonna believe that after you lit this fire? I didn't light the fire. You don't get to just change your story now. Steve, he's telling the truth. What do you mean? Lionel has logged on. Amazing. I knew this would happen sometime, somewhere, but I never thought I'd be the one to witness it. You know what's going on here? Yes, but for now, there are more pressing matters. Does anyone here have one of the security codes? I already told you mine last time. RFTS. Did anyone find any new ones? Oh, I found a blue file which said IRHH in it. I found one which said SOEE. -E. Perfect. Visitor, I confess that just before I cut out last time we spoke, I found a file containing the code EMAS. Now, quickly, enter all the codes. All right, all right. Security code confirmed. Security system online. Beginning scan. Floor B3. Four codes received. Full access branded. Full access? And now lock four fire doors at a time instead of just one. Lionel, tell us what the hell is going on here already. Why is everyone alive again? There's no way I would have enough time for that now. Calculations complete. Fire on floor B3. No casualties expected. No casualties expected? No one has to die. Yes. Now we have the security codes. We're all safe. Let's get out of here then. Urgent. Please enter your system orders. Everyone is back. Steve may have a small case of the stupids, but it seems like everyone managed to go back in time and converge right at this point. This feels triumphant. After having to make difficult choices over and over, we can actually save everyone. The fire has been contained. Fantastic. We're all still alive. Great, but you still owe us an explanation. How is everybody alive again? How did I end up back where I was when the fire started? Why aren't these rooms fire damaged anymore? Beginning scan, floor B2. Visitor, do you remember what I told you before? Yeah, you invented a time machine. Impossible! Well, it was a bit different to a time machine, I guess. It carries your thoughts and memories through time instead of your body. Correct so far. It works going forward, but going backwards... Calculations complete. Going backwards, you killed someone. They never returned to their body. Fire on floor B2, no casualties expected. That is the story as I told it. The person you murdered was my mother, asshole! What? Your mother died of a brain tumor. You told me so. That was a lie. Lionel killed my mother to test some impossible time travel bullshit. So I lit the fire. I lit it to kill Lionel and wreck his corporation before they ruined any more lives. Chris, I don't believe it. I had suspected as much. Christina, your mother is not dead. What do you mean by that? I've seen her body. You took her brain. Urgent. Please enter your system orders. Christina's mother is alive somehow. That seems both possible and impossible at the same time. Her brain was removed, and yet the time travel worked? We don't really know how that's possible yet, but we're about to get some answers. The fire has been contained. Lionel, answers. Your mother is not dead. This is going to be hard to explain. When we sent your mother back in time, she never returned to her body. However, there was not a single fault in our logic. The machine was designed perfectly. The machine is what's in the Tempest room, right? Correct. 
Anyway, we conducted many experiments, and eventually came to one fascinating conclusion. When our subject had traveled forward through time, the future was not set, and so time would bend to accommodate our time traveler. That is, the consciousness traveling through time would remain in its own timeline, but when traveling backwards, things were not so simple. Beginning scan, floor B1. Consciousness would become lost in the mess that is time space. It would find a host, one which owned the consciousness, and one which existed at the time it had been sent back to, but it would not always find its host in its own universe. You lost me. Our research would suggest that there are nearly an infinite amount of universes, each nearly identical, with only minute differences between them. So when Christina's mother traveled backwards through time, she was not alone. Trillions of her, maybe even more, traveled too. They would land randomly into different timelines. Some would land in the same timeline and one consciousness would override the other. In some timelines, no one would ever know that Christina's mother had ever left, or that the consciousness that returned to her body wasn't from their universe. Rare few consciousnesses would land back where they began, in their own universe. But many timelines were left like here, in this universe, where Christina's mother's consciousness left this world, but no other consciousness returned to fill her body. Because of this, the body remained empty, and Christina's mother was effectively dead. But her consciousness lives on in another time, another universe. I'm not buying a word of this! Calculations complete. Fire on floor B1, no casualties expected. But, it explains everything. This is why everything kept happening over and over again. This is why we're all here. Yes, it took me a while to figure out, but we have all been brought here by the Tempest Machine. Visitor, you remember a time in which you let everyone die apart from myself, correct? Yeah, then you gave me access to the Tempest Room. Well, each of these people remembers a different reality, one where they were the only survivor of the fire. That's right. I had to wait and do nothing while Chris died. I had to wait and do nothing as all of you died time and time again. At the end of each of these realities, the survivor entered the Tempest Machine, which had had its clock set to the beginning of this disaster as a security measure. When each of us entered the machine, we were randomly shot into another universe. Some of us would have ended up back where we started, and no one else would remember what had just taken place. There would be a few universes like this, where by chance all of us came from five different universes into one. And that is how we are all here together now, with memories of different futures. Wow. But the chances of that happening would be practically zero. Actually, with as many universes as there are, it was incredibly likely. There are probably hundreds of universes in which the same thing has happened as is happening here. Nothing about this seems incredibly likely. But it is the truth. Urgent. Please enter your system orders. Time travel, when going backwards in this world, doesn't guarantee you a place in the same timeline. There were an infinite amount of Christina's mothers that traveled back through time. Just by chance, none of them ended up here. It's an incredibly interesting way to look at time travel. Through the power of luck, we managed to land in a timeline where everyone has already gone through this fire and lived. With an infinite landscape of universes out there, it was more or less a guarantee that this was bound to happen at some point, but we're the ones who get to experience it. There are a few things left to ponder, but let's see what happens when everyone meets up. The fire has been contained. Hey, guys. All of your paths meet up here, right? They do? Suppose they must. Soon, we'll all be able to talk in person. I can't wait to see you again, Chris. I'm so glad you're safe. I can't either, Steve. I can't believe you're alive. You're both alive. Hurry up, then. I'm already there. Okay, coming through now. I can see you. I'm in. Me too. Hey, has anyone unlocked the door for me so I can come down too? Hello? Anyone? Guys, stop talking in person for a second and look at your messages, damn it! Typical. Now what do I do? Visitor? Christina, can you ask Lionel to open the door for me? No, sorry. I don't think I'll have the chance to. Is something wrong? Where are you? I just stepped out for a moment. I'm at the Tempest entrance. I haven't been entirely up front with you all. What do you mean? I've been here before. Weren't you listening to Lionel? We've all been here before. No, I've been here before, to a timeline just like this one, where we all managed to survive. Except things went a little differently that time. For instance, I asked Lionel where the controls for the Tempest machine were, and he told me they were on floor B2, in my section of the building. Later, he explained to me that the machine can't send consciousness back before the first time it was turned on, which was when my mother was sent back through time. So, I thought I'd give things another try, and I hopped back into the Tempest machine. Don't tell me. This time, while we were on floor B2, I set the machine back as far as it could go to the moment I lost to my mother. I'm going back. I'm going back three years to find my mother. This is crazy! 
What if you just end up in another universe where she disappeared? Then I'll break into here, and I'll travel again. What about the people who care about you in this universe? What about Steve? You should know better than anyone what this feels like. You've had to choose one person's happiness over another's time and time again. In the timeline you came from, you even chose to kill me. I wish I could have Steve and my mother both at once, but I don't have that choice. I've spent too long wishing he was with me to turn back now. Besides, in this world, I'm a murderer and arsonist. There's no place for me here. Christina. You're not going to stop me, are you? No. No, I'm not. Tell Steve I'm sorry and that I love him. Tell him I hope we meet again somewhere, sometime. But for now, goodbye. Goodbye, and good luck. Thanks. I think I'll need it. Christina has disconnected. Reason. Signal lost. Visitor has disconnected. What an ending. First off, it's kinda sad seeing that Christina is still in search of her own happy ending after everything that everyone has been through. But it feels right. The entire motivation for any of this happening at all was Christina's mother dying. And just because she managed to live through this disaster, that doesn't mean it's her ideal path. On a lighter note, we did manage to save everyone. That's gotta count for something. But we still need to answer some questions. The cockatiels. What of the cockatiels? It's never explicitly explained, but there's enough information for us to make a pretty good guess. The cockatiel experiment was a desperate attempt to find out if the experiment actually did work. By teaching the cockatiels a phrase and then sending them back in time, they would retain that information. They would know the phrase Christina lives well before they even made it to Phoenix Corp. So enter that one cockatiel that already knew the phrase. The only explanation was that that cockatiel had been sent back in time and landed back in its own universe. That's why they're the only one that lived, because that's the only one where their consciousness was sent back and landed in its own universe. And as such, it continued to live on in that universe. And the phrase being Christina lives, well, that's the main thing to learn from this experiment. If it worked, then Christina's mother didn't die. They found the phoenix a amongst the cockatiels. Speaking of Phoenix, there's one last tidbit worth mentioning about this game. The door codes, you know, RFTS and so on. They seem a little random, right? Do they mean anything? Well, rise from the ashes. Higher than the Phoenix from the dungeon with some true made men. Listen, now. The reason I wanted to talk about this game at all is because there's just something special about it to me. The main story of this game only takes about 45 minutes to get through, if you ignore me interrupting to put the pieces together every few minutes. And yet, it feels extremely grand in concept. These characters, their motivations, the rules of time travel within this world. It seemed to be popular on Newgrounds, and it even has a Wikipedia article if that means anything, but it came out a decade ago, and I don't really think it's a game that people are going to be thinking about much nowadays. And that's fair, I don't really think a fandom for this game would have a lot to work with, all things considered. But despite that, this feels to me like a game that's worth immortalising in some way. I see this as a game that's a lot grander than it may appear, and I really wanted to share that vision with people. That's all I really have to say. It's a game I've been thinking about for years now, and I'll be thinking about it still for years to come. Thank you for watching if you did, remember to hit like if you liked, and hit subscribe if you subscribed, that doesn't really work. Well, that's all from me. Time to edit in that one teleport sound effect and then add a cloud of smoke. <laughs>